Okay, so the first thing I did today was just to replace this seal here. And then I put the master cylinder, clutch master cylinder on after I just give it a quick refurb. Now what I notice is adjusting the clutch pedals, the bolts in both of these were the wrong size. They should be a one inch long. So I've changed those out. And these should be six and a quarter inches off the ground with the brake and the clutch pedal. And these are working really nicely and smooth. Although they're not attached to anything. Now I've even put the throttle, throttle pedal on a little bit. Let's have a look at the throttle pedal a little bit. Well, this is the first arm and the shaft that goes through the foot toe box, I think it's called. That's all tightened up and I didn't adjust these so I know that it's the same length as it was. Although if it's like everything else on this truck, it's useless uh, until it's been, you know, properly, properly done. Anyway, so I'm not happy with these, these little, I haven't got um, a PZ whatever or a PH, I haven't got a Phillips screwdriver in the original Land Rover kit. So I've got to find myself some slot ones. I might just grind some slots in there with a file actually. But they do fit really well. So when I, when I pulled it off, we didn't have a gasket on the brakes. So I've now got a brake gasket for the pedal box. And this is the old gasket, which wasn't too bad actually, after a bit of a clean up. It has a bit of a tear, but that's nothing now. I've got it covered in, in, in plastic just to be on the safe side because we're having a lot of rain lately okay now I've fitted the new the new one of these I already knew that the relay arm was working quite well yeah the relay unit the relay unit so that's okay There's a way to put this in, this column support, you put it in, face it down, bring this back, bring the top back, and then bring this forward. And then that's resting in the right position. Now I, I've put that grommet in there, and it's just almost in the way We'll leave that there. I want to get some, some rag in there just to mop this moisture up. So that's the steering column support support. And the new the new seal. I'm happy with the way this is turning out. This is my screen wash. It's the Tudor hand pump one. I remember I left that clip in here because we, we couldn't get it out when the dash was stripped go around the other side it's sealed behind here behind a, a new panel anyway so there's me Tudor washer got some things going on here now don't we so now I know up, up the other end if I take you up the other end there and have a quick zoom in you can see some holes roughly in the puddle of water that's up there take you back now so I know that those two holes at the top end of the dash, they're redundant. I can get grommets for them. Because that would be, if you had a left-hand drive, you'd be uh, setting that this up over there. All right, paint it up quite nicely. All right, well, this do I know it don't look like much. Okay, well, so there's one or two issues with the exhaust. Uh, most of it is missing. All right, so we got the silencer right here and Well, I mean the first thing here I Don't mind this position here, but of course it's pointing up a bit It's gonna get a bit of wet in there, and that's gonna drip it down Now well, the first thing I mean this clamp is not original this flexible We've got to undo this clamp. We want to move this along so that this is in a slightly so it's not rubbing against that. Okay, so it's, well, it wants to be out here a bit. So I might need a spacer, maybe. 
the actual box. I think it needs to be roughly in the middle of this distance here. So in other words, you know, the clamp here is in the wrong place. We can bring this in. If we put the clamp about here, then this angle has this angle has more to do with missing this, I think. And that's where we want to bring that in. So it's like the first exhaust I've ever done, and that's why I'm doing it with a tub off. You know, before I even put the engine in, I really want to get the exhaust system in place and secure. So this long wheelbase one, I'm pretty sure it has another hanger here. As well as the hanger just over there. Let's zoom in on that hanger there. Because I know that's an exhaust hanger, because I took it off. And I'm bringing you back to what I think is another exhaust hanger, but I've not been able to see any pictures. It wasn't, there was a couple of bolts on it when I got it, but there was no fabric hanger. So obviously the intermediate pipe has got to come off. So like I say, I want to get the actual unit roughly central here. I like the height. Let's have a look underneath here. So I like, I like the way that's up there. It's out of the way. The other thing, so this bend here, I think has to do with missing this hanger. So we want to bring that this way. And we need to bring it all this way. It's too close here. Uh, let's have a look at this weld up because I welded it up like so it's had a weld repair and I think I think it was damaged when I've welded it and I've welded it welded it in in the damaged position I think really it should stick out straight and it actually sticks out at 45 degrees but I don't think that's a big deal if we can get this spring hanger in the right place that spring hanger <laughs> this exhaust hanger in the right place and so we've got to take it off mess about with this uh, u-bend or whatever it's called u-clip and we'll, we'll rehang it again just as a check it's my repairs it's a little bit crooked I think but we're just giving it a quick blow over in silver the bowls all sort of quality replacement part so it's already worth keeping well you're gonna have to wait for the big reveal I'm afraid because we're all under plastic bags at the moment well it's not a lot to reveal is there we've uh, connected the reservoir to the clutch master we need the pipe from the clutch master to the flexible hose and we also need the master cylinder to the reservoir brake, which isn't a very long pipe, but I don't have one. And then we need the master cylinder to the top hose, to the top of the uh, five-way. Okay, now the five-way, I've been struggling with this for ages, but it didn't occur to me to remove it, fit the hoses, then replace it. It didn't, that didn't occur to me, but that <laughs> just makes life so much easier. Anyway, so that's as on as we can get it. Two pipes missing at the moment. Pipe to here, obviously it goes through here. Which it wasn't, and then it's down here along. There's another clip. It goes downhill. Now this, you know, I, was, I like this when we did it. You know, fitted it to the new lower relay arm. Correct. But of course, you know, we spent a lot of time getting this one right because of the state it's in. It just now looks so much more glossy and better than this steering arm. Now we've been messing about slightly with the tracking. The more I see this, the more I don't really like it. But, you know, it actually pushes in a straight line. <laughs> so there's there's not a lot of adjustment for camber and stuff like that it's really just tracking anyway we're going to wait till we've got the steering wheel on we haven't done the clamps up we haven't put the split pins in hmm
couple of pipes, three pipes. We need three pipes. We put the uh, the rest of the throttle linkage, throttle accelerator system. So I'll just remove the split pin from this crown castle and slotted nut. And this is for the steering arm. So this goes on the upper, this is the upper relay upper arm. So it's off for a bit of a refurb. I've just gone over it with a wire wheel. And it's time, this, this track rod will go again, but I, what I want to do is know whether this is the left hand thread or the right hand thread. Although I could, could refer to that in the parts catalog, of course. So this is not really an important video. So I'm going to stop it there, I'm going to take off this slotted knot and then hopefully get on with it. Alright, well, so this one is the left hand thread. There I go, screwing it clockwise and out she's coming. Now I'm not counting the rotations on this because it was it's pretty well screwed all the way in and to be honest I want to set it up fresh anyway. Just in case you was wondering what all that noise was about. Snapshot of a C27 there, I think. Okay, it's nicely nicely covered in um, copper copper slip still showing up it's been in there you know it's probably been in there for 30 years and it's coming out really easy I mean I don't see that anyone would have put this in more recently than when it was last on the road uh, new rubber gator obviously right we've got to get it out without killing it I have actually noticed some sort of original black paint there under the clamp. Well, that's quite good. So I want to actually keep this track rod, uh, this ball joint, for another time. So you know, rubber gate was fairly destroyed. Now the way to separate it from this arm that I'm going to use, I've got this old piece of. Uh, it's a piece of a girder reinforced steel girder which is a bit bent up actually anyway it's got a slot uh, ground into it cut into it and I've just gently kind of prized the rubber apart and so I've got the arm on one side and the ball joint on the other and I've got this handy large chisel which is actually profiled, profiled to get uh, wheel bearings out on a motorbike it's uh, nice and long that's a specific wheel bearings and with any luck, if I actually bang it there with a hammer, it should break that ball joint in about two hits. Probably should have worn earplugs for this. Just get my gloves on. It didn't work. It didn't work. Oh well, <laughs> it wasn't such a good idea after all, was it? Damn, I'll try it the other way around. Put the ball joint in that side. It's got to be a fair way, it's got to be. Not sure we'll be able to use the ball joint again. I hope so. It needed a new slotted knot anyway. I think it was supposed to be three apes, but it wasn't having three apes. Yeah, what happened was the Part of the 
spring that holds the spring clip. The rubber gate might have been digging in. Let's have a quick look at this. It certainly needs a clean. But it's there's nothing rubbing in there. So that's what I use, just a, a thing with a slot. And then the idea is, is that that should have a taper. But you know, it's you saw it, it didn't work. It didn't work in two hits, it needed a few. Uh, so from the rear left to the T-piece, to the rear right, flexible hose, the forward brake pipe, through the bulkhead, to the five-piece, five-way junction, the brake switch, the left hand, the right hand, and to the master cylinder and to the clutch master cylinder and on the end of the flexible because I haven't got this the flexible goes to the slave cylinder we don't have one so I've clamped it I'm gonna put some dot four in the uh, in the bean can okay straight away I had a had a drip from here I think it might still be dripping and it's uh, already stained my paintwork which uh, is a bit stupid to let that happen one more nip might just do that. Otherwise, we've got we've got some problems here. Man. That's going to still drip. We'll keep on nipping that. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll have to have a look around for other ones. You know, one of the reasons I'm into projects is to see how they affect me, not just mentally, mentally and physically. You know. And we're reaching one of them stages. This is a classic. This is a classic moment where you've really, you know, you've got to kind of get a grip, get a grip of yourself, and try and not control your emotions. But you've got to learn a bit of patience, you know. And I know we've been into this project for sort of nine months, and we was getting on pretty well. But let's have a look and see what's going on here. Okay, I've got a big surprise here because I've got a brand new bear mark wheel cylinder in there and I've got a big telltale patch of brake fluid appearing on the bottom now that happened as on the other side on the right side and I just uh, slackened off the bleed screw and uh, you know it started started bleeding up but you know I'm surprised I'm surprised that I've got a sort of potential wheel cylinder leak there because that's a brand new cylinder that's annoying. So that's this. Both these left side wheel cylinders, or one of them on this side, is pretty good. I clamp the other cylinder here. Uh, clamp the other flexible hose here, and you know, not actually losing a great deal of brake fluid there. But you know, I've got a big puddle of it over the back there, so I'm going to have to go and have a have a look at that. Got two problems. Oh yeah. Okay, definitely noticing some weeping here. You know, this brass fitting is not seating properly in 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 the five in the five piece. I'm swapping this one out. I don't like this pipe. I don't like the copper pipe. I'm going to replace it with because it's too long. But you know, the copper ones, in a way, they do seem a little bit more reliable. Okay, here I am at the surface, there's the brand new wheel cylinder, never been used. And what I can see, glistening down there, I can see the wheel, the brake fluid is glistening down there. So it's coming from this side of the cylinder. Alright, so what we found, it is actually, it is the connecting pipe to the T-piece that's leaking. Just behind there, there's a trickle, and it's trickling through where I should have had a, an O-ring, but it's, so it's going around the front. So what we've got to do is reseat this. So it's my installation of, of this pipe, which is the second pipe I installed. That's at fault. I thought it should have gone in further, but there it is. Let's get on with it. And I'm going to have to clamp the flexible hose, take you over rapidly there. Take you over to the flexible hose. Got to clamp it. Yesterday I put some brake fluid in the reservoir and I'm here today to have a look around because there were some issues. I mean, the back does seem to be pretty good. That's a good start. Let's have a look inside the reservoir. I've got 
half half of the brake version. The clutch hasn't moved at all, that's alright, that's good. So, all right, so now we, we do have rear brakes. So what we're getting is something that's beginning to resemble a stiff brake pedal. I mean, it's only beginning to resemble it. Okay, okay, it's uh, raining again. I think it's just stopped, we've just had some light rain. You don't want to be bleeding your brakes outside in the rain. Now, uh, the easy bleed, it fills the reservoir right up so high that there's, 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 uh, there's too much fluid in the reservoir when you put, pop the filter back on. So that's, that's, that's not very good, it slightly overfills it. Now I've had, been having a, a mare with this brake system. I've used the easy bleed twice and I'm still getting a very spongy brake pedal, a complete loss of pressure. So you know, I've gone back to the drawing board, which is the the drawing board is the uh, workshop manual, and it says to to use these flexible hoses to isolate the problem. I've, I've clamped the back off, so the T piece is now isolated. Um, and I've just noticed a blob of brake fluid, but I have been bleeding the brakes today. So anyway, but any so like I say. Let's not confuse the issue. I've clamped, clamped the flexible hose at the back. It, I've got the, um, the brake switch there. That's the brake switch, it's the hydraulic switch. I've now connected it to the multimeter. So we've now got enough pressure to run the brake switch. And the pedal is not going to the floor. However, when I clamped this hose, there was even more pressure. But that... Basically, what I'm quite happy is I'm quite happy that the, the junction there is all connected up properly. There's enough hydraulic power in to run the switch, and there's no there's nothing leaking. I'm going to disconnect that, so I'm happy with that. So I can continue and put the drop arm on. Whoops, I'm short circuit there. Not happy with the top of the reservoir there, but I think that's because the easy bleed left it slightly over full. You don't, you don't want to be doing this in the rain. I'm outside in the rain. Uh, well, I've, I've called it a day for today, to be honest, but that's some progress. At least we've got a hydraulic switch that now works. But what we, what we know is, if I were to release the pressure on, on this flexible hose, if I was to open this up, you know, it wouldn't work. So whether we just need to simply bleed it some more or whether we've actually got a situation where we're losing hydraulic fluid. I mean, I already checked these. There's only, you know, there's only a few tiny, tiny little places where you can actually have a leak. And all that is is just residual grease because I just greased everything. You know, there's no puddle of brake fluid or anything. And it, it does puddle up pretty quickly if you've got a problem, you know. So, I think what I'll do is bleed it from the back again when it stopped raining. But... All right, got part way through bolting these on. Of course, I realize you've got one of the stays. Now, I think the stays go straight across because it lines up in there and in there. If we take this one over, that would go in there and lining up to that hole there. I don't think it would come across. I think it goes straight across. So we've uh, got a couple of bolts in the wrong place. It's difficult to get all of the old paint off. The sandpaper leaves it brighter. You 
you don't really want it bright. The galve was probably in tatty condition, which is why we got this uh, silver coating later on, the silver paint. And underneath the silver paint is some sort of orange red undercoat and then over the silver paint is some olive drab but we're getting rid of it all so it will all look sort of mottled galve color like that and I'm just using a wire wheel carefully okay in the end then I opted for that one with uh, both of the uh, both of the guns and the seals are in there, so that's got two seals in the top of the cap. It just would not seal even, I think that could be residual from the last time, because this is actually uh, connected. And I've uh, had to make sure that was pumped up, because I've used this thing twice. Let's have a look, make sure, so... It's kind of weeping, I suppose. Anyway, so I'm on now, right now down here on the last one. And these bear mark ones have got a three apes bleed screw. Well, looking at the vent flaps, obviously from previous pictures, I know they're supposed to sit flush like this. Now the one we repaired, of course it doesn't sit flush because <laughs> I was hoping it would bed in. Now the fact is, these little gadgets, these little guys, they're, they're not shutting properly. Okay. Now whether we, whether we can get the seals to bed in a little, it's both of them that aren't shutting properly. That one over there, and this one over here, which it shuts to about, it shuts down, but it don't shut properly. So the issues with the brakes on the 109 seem to be at the wheel cylinders, all the pipes and other junctions like the T-piece and the five-way junction with the hydraulic brake switch. They seem all to be all sound and any issues seem to be either at the flexible pipes or at the wheel cylinders themselves. So what I've been able to do is, is get on with other things while I sort of pull myself together about what exactly the problem is with the brakes. So one of the first things that I've been doing is, is having a look at the, the underside of the bonnet, which, which did have a lot of overspray of different colours. But I think originally it was probably supposed to have not been painted because in the 60s they probably wouldn't have painted it if it didn't need to be painted. And the underside of the the underside of the tub and the floor panels have all kind of got this gold goldy appearance, this lacquer over the so I took it down to the lacquer. These ribs, let's call these ribs, these are gonna be green because I've found there's evidence of green and these triangular bits are there's evidence that they're going to be black I mean, that's pretty original paint there so they're going to be black triangle bits black the rest of the ribs are going to be the green these will be black for example it looks like a, some sort of factory hole punched in there <laughs> because because it's got reinforcing around there you know where it's Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. What, what draws me away from that conclusion is, of course, there isn't one down here. Right. It's looking all nice in there as well. So it's really good, this. We're going to brush paint this nice and thick green. And then when we flip it over, we'll uh, spray it talking to spray and we sprayed this it's not not very good okay this wing didn't turn out as well as I would have liked to be honest the spray orange peeled on me and went a bit matte and flat so it probably it probably won't come up as well as I would like but in my defense it's it was quite dented and yeah you know, at the front it's had the registration plate on but it don't look to have 
to have been bolted on with washers at all and so that's cut through cut down the metal should have really had some washers on there I think to spread the spread the force that might be what the problem was so you know if you look closely you can still see like loads of layers of paint and uh, well, I'm just going to have to put up with that, so it's, it's what I call a blow-over. Also, where the mud shield goes on, there's a fair bit of corrosion on this wing. So it's not the best wing in the world. And in fact, you know, that's where your steering, steering box bolts in there. And down there on the steering wheel column support, that's, that's fair enough, but... So, you know, just paint job, it's not the best paint job, but it isn't the best wing, is it really? There's the hole. So now, an aluminium oxide hole right there. And I did see another one. So, you know, if anyone says anything about those, I'll, I'll probably just put a 2BA bolt through there or something, just a little nut and bolt to hold, hold it all together, but I don't think it's a big deal. The other thing, of course, been cleaning up. It's had some, some fairly thick old paint on it, so I wire welded it off back down to the galve. Uh, now some of the galve has come off, I guess down here. That's why it was really painted in the first place, because where the galves come off you do get a bit of rust. And uh, so it's not all galved, it's a bit dicky the galve. But I'll probably just treat that with Genolite or something, you know, and just spray over it with a bit of lacquer, because some people will silver spray hammerite on these but I've just I've just taken a load of brush painted hammerite off it so still next to do is to do something about these weather seals which are totally I don't know whether my riveting's good enough yet to really do anything and the weather seals are quite expensive and probably just gonna leave that for the time being having hunted down a lot of the past is the most expensive part right here this top this top clamp for the intermediate pipe at the front end of the intermediate pipe where it joins the back end of the front pipe I won't be fitting the front pipe today now we've got the silencer it's unceremoniously hanging down kind of attached to a half put together rear silencer clamp the bolts out of sight. Let's see if we can see the bolts. The bolts in waiting for the rear end of the intermediate pipe, which is going to be hanging on this genuine parts part. And I'm looking forward to unifying this all together. Maybe, maybe it would have been a good idea to unify the intermediate pipe to the rear silencer before mounting maybe it would be a good idea to attach these clamps to the intermediate pipe before mounting to the chassis or fit into that it's obvious that there are many ways to do this there are many ways to mount this exhaust and with the back off it's gonna only be easier so I wouldn't be looking forward to doing this with it on now Having said that, we'll probably use a little combination of both. Let's put these on, then mount it, but let's find out where these have to go first. And I'll probably support this with a jack once I'm ready to actually do that. Okay, it wasn't very difficult to attach the square end of the intermediate pipe to this clamp, the triangular end of the intermediate to this clamp. Now the clamps are not done up very tight because you want to allow some rotation. It looks like it wants to be about there. So I mean, let's have a look. That, that it goes down under that cross member and comes up over this axle in quite an exaggerated form. Now the trouble for me is that the the tail, uh, the silencer box, tail pipe as I sometimes call it, but the silencer box, because it's got a little 
and maybe bent slightly and I want it to attach to this square end that's under that cardboard you can't see it because I might actually stop working and, and go away and do something else I don't want any rubbish to get up there any squirrels or anything yeah any squirrels so I've just basically attached the tailpipe to the mount with a piece of string it allows you to get the, the rear box in the right rotation at the right distance so that it links up with the four piece so now all I have to do is just get the gasket put them together and then when I go to clamp it I'll know where to put the clamp and I can support it with a jack string idea was all very well so but it, it didn't really allow you to slide up and down as you would like it snagged at every opportunity it twist and snag and the main thing for me was to move this down basically I've got two settings an upper setting and a lower setting and it was on the lower setting that I managed to get clearance here now all the clamps aren't done up tight got it joined I had to put the, the get the washer the joint washer in there the gasket obviously it would have been a waste of time to fit it without the joint washer in it just got enough clearance under there and over there everything's got to be tightened up and obviously I don't want to leave it with this piece of string here so I've got the clamp here which didn't want to go around this aftermath aftermarket exhaust to be honest now once I fitted with the clamp here I'm hoping that I'm going to have a clearance here as that's slightly annoying that it's very close anyway we'll see how we get on that's my uh, wobbleometer So oh, it's possibly a little bit annoying that it might just be touching the spring shackle. We'll have to wait and see. Certainly like the height and position. And uh, you know, considering it's an aftermarket, it's a Bosel rear box, which is possibly very sort of old and used. And this is a brick part intermediate pipe. That's gone together really well. I mean it's only just might not even be touching there it's, it's insignificant it's uh, sitting really nice it's not stressing any of the rubber reinforced rubber mounts right so what I've done now is just put a little bit of panel seal let's have a look at this panel seal that I've just put over this I'm just going to loosely attach the wing because we are getting a lot of rain and stuff these days Oh, the other day I was quipping that, that these, so what I did, these these weren't fitting right, but they're now fitting right. So I opened them up, I loosened these right back, and I held it, held it shut and tightened them up. Well, I held them shut, put the catch down, then tightened them up. And that's actually worked, but I'm not going to open them until that's, I'm satisfied they've bedded in. So with the windscreen in position, it'd be easier to remove the rivets on these things, I think. Just, it's like holding it in the right place. So here's the new seal. I've tried to get it kind of uniform all the way along, but it does slide around a bit. And so it's a little bit, so it exposes more in some places than others. I'm a bit disappointed with the windscreen. Might be able to get it at the right angle to see. Well, the passenger side windscreen's all scratched up. Oh well, yeah, you can just about see it there. It's all been scratched, where the windscreen wiper's been going over it with no. It's like someone didn't know how to switch the windscreen wiper off. Yeah, don't like that. I mean, if you. <laughs> because I didn't grind the welds down. So we've got the this bonnet, bonnet buffer is in, as opposed as is the other one. 
leaving the only one of the only holes now to drill is a, a hole here for the voltage regulator this being the 2a and not the 2 there's no backing plate for the regulator the regulator bolts straight to the bulkhead there's the fuse box screws and the, the other two screws holes are for the clamp for the ignition coil there were some holes in the dash here they are for the flasher relay and the other hole is for an earth that goes to the control panel so uh, you know with the wing sort of half in position could put the the bonnet catch on bonnet lock yeah, but we've got to put the front grill on the front panel the radiator panel the front panel and so putting the bonnet we'd have to take it off put it on put it on again okay so here we've got some clip holes and we think this clip hole is is a strange clip hole <laughs> might actually be for the box that covers this the steering unit box the steering cover box This has been sitting in the shed six months now and uh, well what we did uh, this last May we started to repair it putting in a section there a section here a section here and was when I did this I was using 0.9 wire and obviously welding it from the other side and grinding it down it's not too bad actually but you know I didn't complete the welding I didn't complete the welding I had other things to do now the thing we've got to measure it and get a piece of angle iron it's a piece of angle that goes all the way on the inside it goes all the way along catch off and give it a, a good clean up. Now a reason I want to take the catch off is because it's got to be sprayed up and this, this catch is in the same colour. So looking in it, so the angle iron goes down the bottom here, all the way along the bottom it goes under this bit. Okay it goes under there and it's welded on. You'll have to drill holes in. These are the holes that there should be three of these and they are corresponding to the holes in the chassis so you drill through that yeah and then so we'll take this off we'll give the whole thing a spray and we'll get a new panel strip these are bifurcated our friend are bifurcated rivets we might even be able to save these ones I mean I think they're 80p each but we've totally lost it there you know going to need a blow over. It's got two extra coats of paint which is nothing really. For a 70 year old Land Rover just to have a couple of coats of paint over. Yeah, and that's just overspray. Amazing. Here's my left hand wing. I left one of the fixings on here. Let's just have a look underneath. where the mud shield's going to bolt on. It's a little bit corroded on there. Anyway, there's not a lot I can do about it. Now here, this could be for a spire nut. What goes here is the washer bottle. And the one I've got is on original. I'm going to get a Tudor washer bottle, whereas I've got a Tudor pumper got the valence for the bottom I took that off it's held on by little BAs now as mine is a petrol uh, engine I'm sitting roughly where the engine would be and the exhaust down pipe comes the front pipe comes straight down if I had a diesel 
it would come out horizontally through this hole. As a result, a petrol engine has a cover here. You can just see the outline of it. It seems to have fallen off because of the pop rivets. This isn't very good. However, this hole, <laughs> this hole and this hole are not connected. It's this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole, which all got pop rivets in. That's for the cover that I'm talking about. It's a blanking plate because we haven't got a diesel. The diesel exhaust goes right through there. But my diesel being a petrol comes straight down here. Now, as I haven't got this blanking plate, I'm gonna to have to make one because you can't get them. You, can't, you can get them sometimes, but I'm not waiting around for one. Yeah, what I've got here is actually the old mud shield, which is, uh, it was too far gone to save. But I managed to cut a piece out. It's a bit rough. <laughs> it's a bit rough and ready. But we'll put that, we'll put that uh, angle in it. And we'll see if it, it works as a template. And then we might get a piece of aluminium later if this isn't, if this isn't satisfactory. I don't think it will be because it's actually got a fairly large perforation in it already. But you never know. Might look alright for a paint job. I've got the front valence here for my Series 2A, 1962 Series 2A, so it's the one, it's actually made of two parts that are spot welded together, and it's the square looking one. Now, little known, I found out, and not a lot of people actually know that there's a canvas strip for these. These holes one, two, three, are for a canvas strip, similar to the panel strip that goes for the bonnet. This is just to stop vibration and stuff. And you can see the imprint of the old canvas there. Oops, it's <laughs> got extra patination now. So there's on the other side, other holes for the panel strip and they are in the parts catalogue you can't get these or if you can you're very lucky but here's something this is the old panel strip for the bonnet and if you turn it backwards the holes don't match up but the thickness is perfect okay so you could have it either way really you could have it that way but if we go back If you have a look at the the indentation where it was embedded in the paintwork, it actually matches the reverse side, which is this side. So I get some of the famous brass bifurcated rivets, cut it to size, and I should be able to kind of fabricate the anti-rattle canvas strip, which is right there. So it's all a little bit of a, well, you know, it's a little bit of a, a sort of heart in the mouth setting, setting the valence up. Now here's, here's my new or fabricated seal. So that's so that when that gap's closed up, now I'm wondering if I should have used panel sealant. It kind of closes that gap up a bit. I haven't closed it up all the way yet. That's, that's doable. I remember it was quite tight getting it off actually. Anyway, so now uh, I'm going to go and attach, attach the other canvas strip. And I've actually got to find all the bolts, the fixings. need five, five of the fixings and uh, yeah, I need to set it all up at once because I've got the mud shield. Because I've got the mud shield, You know, I've got to paint the mud shield. But before I put the mud shield in, I suppose we'd better do that last 
penny washer up there on that wing. Hmm. Otherwise that is not going to get done. Alright, today I've got my rear mount and angle in. Now it's looking a bit high because I've still got the mounting bolts in place. It's got a little acid etch. Oh, it's a laser etch code. Okay, now I've got the bolts on the other side. So basically she sits in like that, flush. And then we can put a couple of rivets in there, close that up. Okay, I finally got my rear mounting angle. And I've also, at the back, well under the rear mounting angle, there is a, an end piece that goes now that's not properly secure, this is the end piece. Um, hence, there's probably a gap there. Anyway, that's the important thing is to get the mountain angle in there. It's bolted in two places and the rest of it's rivets. I want to put a couple of rivets up the back here. Got it from Bits for Landies. Okay, now these corner brackets go in. Now I drilled out the spot, spot welds. I'm going to replace those with pop rivets. Basically that corner bracket goes in there. Well, actually comes closer, goes there, and then we'll have to drill some uh, holes where there was uh, spot welds. Now, I'm not going to use every single spot weld hole, but first, behind that bracket, we've got to put, we've got to sink one in there, and then the bracket goes over one. I seem to remember that. Uh, yeah, so this is the the rear mountain angle, and what we'll do is we'll clamp. We'll clamp that up together where there's a lot of damage in the end piece. And I mean, that's the best we can do. It's not a very pretty back end of a tub. Here's some further damage. And, uh, you know, I might just put a reverse in light there or something. So, what I'm doing is just putting regular capping rivets, pop rivets. Probably do one there and another one there so five on the side there and then we'll, we'll come in and, and put the bracket corner bracket here now it needs a cap in rivet there we'll clamp all that together and put a couple rivets okay so holding it with a C clamp enables us to keep keep this corner bracket straight and we use the old the old spot weld holes and they've lined up I right, put those in first and then back here there's a lot of spot weld holes so I've not used more than three and of course this capping hole is um, for these dome top rivet solid rivet hole uh, can't actually get in there. I might just finish that off with a, with a pop rivet actually because uh, you know I'm a chicken. <laughs> I haven't got I haven't got the right rivet. I haven't got the right rivet, you know, and it's a is it a rivet counter job, you know, but I don't know. Anyway, so we've got to carry on moving along now because obviously this needs to be uh, correct correct in places so we're going to need another two here and then here we're going to have to decide what to do because the damage is it's pretty bad as you can see so just coming to the end of this very early winter day late autumn day there's the there it is installed complete swath everywhere you know given the circumstances Given the circumstances, this is as good as I can get it, really. There's a little bit of a, a little bit loose there, you know, and there's a bit of metal missing there. Oh well. I didn't make much of a, a record of actually taking the tub off, so I've got to make a record of putting it back on, hopefully. So. Starting with a tub on the deck, which this isn't, because I didn't start the video. Started jacking here. 
Now, let's take it under and have a look at the jack. See, this is the jack in the second position on past the first rib. There's a piece of wood there. That's important. So I use a piece of wood along the bottom here, jack it up far enough so that I can get the axle stands, they're not axle stands, sorry, these vehicle ramps, and I use ramps, uh, to get them under the first stage. So this allows stage two, so we're actually on stage two, got the jack under the first rib, which wasn't a very good shot there, and we're going to jack that up now. Now there is... There is a problem, and it, it is that it, it can. Let's go and have a look at the back. Okay, so here we are, the long wheelbase tub. Now, it's an old tub, right? It's an old tub. I have put up this. <laughs> this is the one. It's the, my brand new uh, rear mountain angle. Now, the thing is, of course, because it's an old tub, you know, I'm not that bothered about the capping. I mean, look at the state of it. It's just going to be a little bit of extra patination. Now, there is a problem you can get. And that'll be the tub can start them to work back on itself. You have to allow it time to, to dig in so it can slide back really easy at this early stage. This is stage two of getting it getting it together. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jack it up hopefully and get these ramps further under than just this first ledge. We really want to get them right under there, and then we'll be on stage three, which we'll have to wait and see what happens. Okay, now here we are under there. The ramp is in between the first and the second rib, and on this side, <laughs> well, I never. The ramp is actually not touching. There's a slight sort of, you know, it's just the way it undulates in the ground. It's probably higher up in the back corner there, but you know, so the ramps are well and truly under there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just increase this angle, and I'm going to put. I may as well, here's a spoiler, I'm going to put a bridge between these two ramps and the jack will be in between that bridge and this thing, you know, basically we're going to jack this right up to 45 degrees, you know, tipper style. Okay, so this is going to get, this is like, by the time we're at the top, of the ear will be up here, okay, you know, and that's providing it don't trickle back. Now it shouldn't do. Because what happens is, this part of the capping digs in, okay, it gets an effect where it just digs into the ground and it won't, it don't, uh, you know, shift back. You don't want to leave it there for ages and jump up and down on it, obviously. But it should, I mean, you know, it's got several dents and patinations, I'm, you know, I'm not really that worried about it. Okay, now there is... There's a little piece of bodywork right where the red of the axle ramp, car ramp is, just to the right of it, in line with the canvas padding. There's a small piece of trim on the base at the top, and you just got to watch that because you don't want to bend it. And it, so if I were to let the jack go now, let's have a look at the jack. It's propped up with the jack. Looks pretty precarious at an axle ramp car ramp is right there that's, that'll take that you know and if it's going to slide anywhere it'll be sliding back because we're not quite at the halfway point yet likewise the sort of the ramp is here and that's ready to drop down but hello look at that it's it's actually not in the right place i've got to go a little bit to the right because there's that little bit of trim on the other side be all right now now what I want to do is think about getting my bridge across the two. I'm going to go and get that right about now. Right, well in the interest of health and safety, I'm not filming what's going on under there, but you get the general idea. And now we're up, what it is, we want to be high, high enough to, we want to be high enough to basically push the rolling chassis under the beginning of this. So that's what I'm going to do right now. This is an important piece of wood for later as well. Because you need, what's going to happen is, the ribs, if you just try and walk it up there, the ribs will catch on these parts. So you're going to use that piece of wood as a spacer, so that the ribs of the tub will slide over these parts. 
at this stage. It is a brave stage. Okay, you've got to really, you've got to really be with it, you know, because you could lower the jack, or you could pick it up from the back and try and walk it on. And that's that's where you just got to sort of bite the bullet and be prepared to take a sort of bit of the weight of it, because at the moment you've got you're hoping that that piece of wood is going to be the correct distance to um, give you clearance over any of the little obstacles because otherwise you know you, you, you face having to lower it down by hand anyway let's see what happens I'm gonna, you know I'm gonna pick it up on the back and, and try and piggyback it down I mean you can see what direction you've got to go okay so in the true spirit of uh, brute force and ignorance brute force and ignorance what we're now we're catching on everything that you can catch on really we've got the rear cross member is well actually they're clear of that well i think we're not we're not very well on we're about 50 50. still got quite a ways to go here but we've got to climb over these suspension mounts so and you know I'm probably going to want to uh, reposition the spacer or something. Right. So a little bit of faffing. Managed to climb over the uh, suspension mounds. Now what we've done? Got that? Wow! You can't see a thing. Well, there's a piece of wood. <laughs> there's a piece of wood under there. Let's see if we can get it from a different angle. Oh, if you can't see the piece of wood. Oh well. There you go. It's low light. Got a piece of uh, that 2x4 <laughs> and that's basically preventing any of the fouling that we were talking about and that's that's what we had an issue with. Incidentally I, I did get my gasket in the end. It's the rubber. We're lined up right over the fuel tank, lovely. We've got, well I can't see now, it's too dark, but of course <laughs> I've still got the piece of wood stuck under there. That's why it looks a bit high and a bit, a bit squiffy. I've got to figure out how to get that piece of wood out. So basically what I've got to do is jack it from the underneath and, and withdraw it, you know, so I might try and jack it from the side here. It's not as straightforward as you might think. 